Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. This is Connie with Bright Paper Crafts. Hope you're all having a great day. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to be showing you how I put together this treat bag. It may look like it's fairly a mess right now. I was just kind of laying things out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, I'm going to move my stuff out of the way. These pieces are... There's two more of the handle pieces. These are all... All of this, uh, let's see here, is from Dreaming Tree. It's the mini gifting bag or box. I'm not sure exactly. I, I know it's mini gifting and then I think it's bag. Uh, I cut it at regular size that, it, that Cricut Design Space imports it. The difference I did on these two pieces, I left the width alone. The Heights I adjusted to 3.825, I believe, or 8, 825. I wanted them just a tiny bit longer. Last time they were a little bit shorter, so I wanted a little bit less in the bottom showing. So, yeah, I think it comes in at 3.6, and I did uh, a quarter of an inch longer. So that's the only adjustment I did. But I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'll show you what I did. I chose to change my cut lines where Dreaming Tree has these. I changed them to score lines. And I feel really stupid because when I made, this is the second bag I've made this way. I did not see the score lines on here. I just made my own. Uh, so just thought I'd share that with you. I don't know how I missed that, but... I did. But I am going to first, I start decorating some of my panels and stuff before I start assembling the box. It just works so much better for me if it's flat or as flat as possible. And so I'm going to get started with that. Paper I used is, oh gosh, it's an, I've had it for a few years, it's from Echo Park. So I really don't know. I'm pretty sure all of it, except you know what I'm using for my gnome, all came from uh, the same pack. It seems like I've been using it for quite a while, but you know when you make a little bit smaller projects and stuff, it sometimes, excuse me, reach goes a long way. So lining up the holes here. up a moment so I can maybe or not see what I'm doing here a little bit. Um, this one just a hair off. I'm going to use my bone folder to burnish everything since we're working on a smaller piece. Excuse me. Excuse my messy desk. I have been working okay all day. I admit it. I just I did have some things I did but I've gotten a lot done today. And I'm going to put this on. I don't, I have to wait until I assemble it to see which is front and back. So I might just kind of, I think, I think this is the front. I'm not sure. We'll find out in a moment. Then we will know. And I know Dreaming Tree, Dreaming Tree has videos on how they put everything together. So be sure to check them out too. I will also be showing you how I do my 3D bow, if you're interested. Aha, I was wrong. This is actually going to be, this piece without the bottom flap is actually going to be my back. And I know that because if I put my flap on, I want it to go toward the back. So I know this is my front piece. Now we all know that. So I'm going to be working on this. Uh, next I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to assemble my handles. Now, I'm doing the handles the same way they have them. I'll give you a tip as soon as I get this glued down on another option you can do. Um, I'm doing my bag very similar to the last one. 
but I will, I'm not going to, I don't have the pieces cut, but I will show you what you can do to change it up. I'm going to keep these, these actually, you can see, lay one right on top of the other. So for right now, I'm using liquid glue, so I want these to dry before I do anything further with them. So if you do use liquid glue, it's a good thing to let them sit a little bit and be sure to let them dry because you'll be come back and curling them a little bit, so to speak. So it's nice to have the glue dry before you attempt to do that or, you know, somewhat dry. And these basically just line up. You can see why I can't use, or I choose not to use very much uh, double-sided tape. Because I just have better luck lining things up. So, okay. Let those sit for a little bit. I'm um, going to show, this is going to be my closure on my purse. Ignore the magnet for now. What I have done is use two uh, Nestability's dies. Now here's where I'm going to show you a little bit of a difference. Mine is going to be just going over. It's kind of difficult to show you this way, but it's just going to go in the middle. And I have chosen to, I marked where it should kind of, I got two little pencil marks I have to take off there, but I have left about a half of an inch in here between. What I did was I sandwiched the first, <clears throat> excuse me, magnet between this top piece and then this piece. And then I just left the back side, the, what, the negative, the opposite side of the magnet attached. So. What I'll be doing is I know where I want to put that, you know, magnet, so it's all going to go together. And I just messed that up, and I'm glad I mentioned that, because I want that magnet to go under this piece of paper. So, another wonderful reason I use uh, Okay, i got to think about this one, but that's why I use my uh, adhesive like that. Now I have, I said I've got these, I'm sure the camera won't pick them up, these real tiny little marks in there. So, I'm just going to try to take this whole piece off a minute. I think it'll come off pretty decent. Get it lined up enough that it will not matter too much. Oh, I'm just going to use some, um, I'm going to figure out which side is going on which. Okay, so I'm going to put glue here. Okay, so what I'm doing is my little tick marks on my, well, it would be my fold now here. I'm laying those between that. It's going to go between this indention here. And I'm just going to I know there's a better way to do this, uh, but for right now, this is the way I'm doing it, okay? I, uh, uh, I know it's going to be pr pretty much very close to the top. I'm going to go with that. It does not have to be exact. And yes, I did reuse my magnets. I, uh, I don't know. I had a project. I don't know what I... For whatever reason, I tore it apart a little bit, and, and I did find two other magnets. I do have to order magnets. I hadn't used any for quite a while, so didn't need any. So let's back up. We, this is the front. We're going to re-put this back on. We've already put the magnet in there. If you're not using magnets, you don't have to do this part. Uh, you can. I used tie, just cut holes and just tie this some baker's twine for the other and it worked perfectly well okay now when we assemble it my magnet is here and I have to 
just make sure I get the glue off of here. It'll just it'll lay there. It'll close it and the back piece. Pretend that's on there and we're good to go. Before I do this though, I'm gonna take my little tick marks off. And now you can also see another reason when I tell you I'm a very slow crafter. I really wasn't kidding. I would often have to go back and take things apart. Okay, I'm going to lay my flap aside for now. I want to put my handles on at least the front portion. And I see I forgot to do something, but I will show you on my other one what I best I can while I'll be coming back to do. So, and I've inked all my edges. Pop this on. I'm not gluing my handles down. Probably should. I have some little oh, rads and mice. Little crappy hands here. Um, try this this way. I have these little heart brads. They came in red pink and white and I wanted to get some white on here just to add a little bit of oh, goodness I cannot handle hang on to anything tonight I have to go get another one before I'm done here I'll try this okay hold on a second I am really sorry I'm getting mad at my fingers okay I found one and I found one. I was <laughs> sorry. Oh, here's the other one. Oh, my head's not getting in the video. We'll try this again. All right. I'm trying to think, I don't really have anything better to hold these. I have a struggle with these little tiny brads for sure. Okay, I'm going to try it this way. I've got it in one. Go in the other. I have a brad opener, so to speak. And a I like it for the brads very much so don't ask my sister got me this uh, I don't know where but it's wonderful okay so there is one attached I only do the fronts at this time because Shall I get it assembled and do a little bit more? Don't want to lose that brad. I don't want to do anything. Now you could have, the next step, oh, I'm going to put this on. The next step you could have done first, I like to get them attached first. Now what you do, take a bone folder, your ruler, pencil, anything, but start curving your handles only to where, you know, it stops where your little scallop circle is. You don't need to do that part too, or you might have a mess. Um, and you don't have to do a lot. It's just to get your paper trained to turn. I don't know if you, I'm sure you've seen that, but if you're new to making gift boxes and whatnot, not everybody is familiar with that. This is also why I said if you're using adhesive or liquid adhesive, let it dry a little bit. It just likes to work together better. Okay. So now I'm trying to think what my best option will be. I think when I'm going to assemble the box, I can always put something in to keep it sturdy to work with. Okay. So the first thing, now how in the world did I do that? I forgot to ink my two edges down here. Wow. And you know, 
I'm not going to spend the time <laughs> to look for this, the, the uh, sponge dauber I use. I'm just going to try to get the right color ink without having everything fall everywhere. I'm just using uh, Blushing Bride from Stampin' Up. I completely forgot. I know I think about it that I didn't, that I needed to do these. So, yeah. This whole bottom piece is not inked. Good grief. I am using a sponge this time. I, it's been cut down into wedges only because this is a bigger piece. I don't normally. So, just thought I'd share that with you. Okay. Now that we have that little bit of oops done, we're going to go ahead and assemble this. First of all, I'm going to assemble this piece first. And I can line it up best. So, my adhesive. This is where, oh, uh, ATG gun or you know, double-sided tape works really well. If you aren't aware, if you use both ATG or, you know, double-sided adhesive, the tape, and then use a little bit of liquid glue, will also give you extra maneuver time and it strengthens the final product. So use both if you have it, if you want it really extra strong and need that extra wiggle room time in there. But, so we've got our front and backs assembled at the side. Then I'm going to start assembling my bottom and my sides. So, first of all, I will do this piece. Uh, don't forget you have this extra bottom piece. Don't worry about it for now. It's good. You might have to just push this... Uh, side in just a little bit at the bottom. I make sure it's lined up where I want it. Kind of hold it there for a little bit. You can actually pinch it together. This paper is not real heavy. It will become much sturdier once it's all assembled. And then there's one other thing I do to add a little bit of uh, sturdiness. Now, if you'd prefer, you could have left your handles off and had done those later. For me, you could. I have better luck adhering at least one side. It just works best. So what you want to do is want to bring this up and get this lined up at the bottom. So it's just lined right up with the score line there. And then, I don't know if you saw it on the first one, I take my bone folder and go along that, kind of coming back to make sure it's all lined up here, still staying there. And I, I like to get it all really tight in there first. Now, I will do the bottom first. That's completely up to you, whether you do the side or the bottom. Personally, I just, it's easier for me to do the bottom. But again, it's completely up to you. And I'm just tucking this side in for now just to get everything straight. You could apply adhesive for both the bottom flap and the side flap together. Don't have good luck doing that. I don't anyway. I, I tried that on my popcorn boxes and I'm not going to do that again. So, whatever works for you. I'm just going to hold this moment on making sure my bottom is still straight on there. I do not consider myself a perfectionist, but I like things to be as straight as possible. Let's put it that way. And then what I do is I just come back and I'll hold this out a little bit and just shore it up when you're done if you need the bottom and everywhere. But we're going to come back and 
sure that's all. I'm going to hold this one a little bit because for some reason this last side it always just wants to pop a little bit for me. need a little bit more adhesive right up at the top here. I even hauled my glue dots out for this project because it got tired of fighting with adding flowers and waiting for glue to dry on other projects. So I'm going to bring my glue dots out. So, yes, I have some. And, okay. Voila. We got that going. Now, I am going to go ahead and put my brands on the back and hopefully <clears throat> I won't have quite as many problems as I did before other than I've already lost a brad. Hope I found it. I see it back there. I could grief. How could I be so lucky? Okay, these I don't use my tool because I it's harder to get in there to lay them flat. But I want to get the handles on and then I will show you another alternative that you could do just as easy. Mm. I think me and Brad are myself and I, Brad's and I are not the best of friends here. Let's try the tweezers again. It's in there. Let's see if we can make it stay. Goodness. Okay. It is there. Now, <clears throat> so you see I have my little, let me make sure I get this front and back. You know, I have my little hand, my little tab here that I'm going to glue on in a minute. And this will be, so it's already stuck there, my closure. Okay. And we'll just glue it there like that when it's done. You can leave these handles off. I would suggest in hiding the contours for all of the handle stuff, okay? Just to give you an idea. So let's say the handles aren't there. Let's say this is to get off. So you have this. You could take a... I'm going to use it just to give you an idea with the big uh, nestability die. I don't know if this might be too big. I'm not sure. But you could cut it so, or any shape. You could do a square, you could do a circle, round it up. Basically then, you know, you're going to do your two layers like you have here, but it's going to go the long way. It's going to lay on there this way. And instead of your folds going here, they'll go the long way. Okay. And then these handles, I'm going to see what I could choose to show you. I'm just going to use a strip of paper here. Let's say you'd make this much more narrow, but your handles then would go like this. And you just use one handle and you would tuck it under these pieces here. Okay? So basically, no, this is a very wide piece of paper. It's kind of small, but that would be your handle like that. I didn't want to do that. It's too much like a purse, and which is fine, because that's what it ends up looking at, which is really great. But the recipient of this particular uh, box, yeah, I didn't want to do that. That person is a little less frilly. Um, this is going to be quite frilly as it is. But um, I think for Mother's Day, I'm going to do something for my mom and my nieces and my sister, maybe. I'm not sure what I'll be doing, but work with me tonight. Come on. I will make purses and I will show you what I'm doing there. So, but I know there are a lot of ideas out there for that too so 
I'm just gluing this on. I'm just making sure that my oh, I had too much glue, of course, but that my my uh, I can't think tonight. My folds on my purse topper that they clear the rounded part so when you shut it it will stay like that okay so and I'm gonna let that sit it will be fine as it is but I'll come around here and show you and I'll show you what the, on my other bag what I did with the uh, with my brads and I will be doing that and I'll straighten my brads out when I do that but let me show you quick because I, uh, I don't know if I showed you this or not. It just really finishes the inside of the purse. Oh, but if you can see in there where my handles are on the flip side, the color is the same. I have little half inch circles cut out of the box colored paper glued over the little tabs of the brads. And it just, oh, I can see if I can get this straightened out better. It really, I don't, I don't know if, gonna see, if you can help, you can see it, but it really finishes off the, uh, finishes off the inside too. And then if you reach in there, you're not going to risk possibly, you know, maybe, I don't know if you'd cut a finger or if you catch it wrong, you know, if you don't get it exactly down or if it's for a child, you know, just, you don't risk that they get their fingers caught in there. I'm going to see if I can get this, uh open. I'll have to come back and take adhesive off, I see. But I'm going to share with you now how I put this together. My gnome has already got a heat, or got foam tape on him. That's a personal choice. You could um, put him on, you know, like a frame or an oval or anything, you know, just to kind of make him stand out a little bit more. I didn't want to do that because of the brads on there. I wanted them to show a little bit and I don't know. I just, I think my bear, no, I just put him on two. I just popped him up. Anyway, I've got my glue on and I'll get you the size of the gnome in just that brief moment. I just want to get it straight on there. I like to make sure it's stuck down good. I'm trying to kind of be careful of the handles so I keep so I can adjust the hearts so they're straight if I need to a little bit. So I'll do that on the inside on this one. There is that. Uh, he is actually quite small. I know when I put him together I thought I should have made him a little bigger. But from the top of his hat to the bottom down here, he is roughly three and a quarter inches tall. So these are fun for any little project that you have. I'm going to set this aside a moment. I want to show you how I do a 3D bow. You get three pieces. Okay. They were all flat. This is the bottom piece. You see, this is the front. I want it to curl up a little bit. So what I took, just did was just took my bone folder, kind of hold it in the middle, and just rub it along. This was flat. This is going to form the loops of the bow. Here, hold it in the middle. My bone folder is kind of big. Um, I'll make it work. The smaller the bow, if you have something like a long paintbrush, you know the handle, it just curls a little better, um, especially if it's this is a little bit thicker paper. You don't want to get that little tab, that little tiny tab on the end, because that's actually going to get glued in there. There, I finally got the fibers broke down. It was not curling properly. It's getting little funky bends in there. This is the middle piece. You also want to just curl that. 
with the bone folder I do like you know half and half or so it just wraps around the bow so much nicer so what I do is I first form the loops and I use my tweezers here in a moment to hold it so it gets tight but just bring that first little loop over and then you can wait for that to dry or be like me impatient and I just put this next loop over try to hold it a little bit hold it with my bone or with my tweezers and I think you can see how it's coming together now I'm gonna curl this one back a little I've got it so it's rippled so it goes curves up and then it curves down um, completely up to you how you want to do it so it just gives a little bit more dimension but it's actually gonna go on um, like this I'll give you another clue that loop is a little bit weak I'll show you how to fix that in a moment but uh, put some glue in the middle here and again, I'm going to hold it together with my tweezers. It'll all just kind of match up here. It's great if you have double-sided paper. If you don't, no big deal. Okay, so for the other bow, this also works if the bow flattens on you for any reason, a paper bow. This is just a little tiny paintbrush. See if I can. I'm holding it in the middle here just to give you an idea. But you can just kind of, you know, shape it there. Pencil works, whatever want you want, but it'll uh, all come together. Now, you got your middle piece. I just put glue on one end at a time because, again, I can't get things to hold. I come to the back. Put it down, okay? So it's in the center like that. And you might see, you can probably buy dies, and I've seen them where they, the center flat piece is attached. You could actually cut it that way in design space just by welding. This works for me. So here's my little flap. I'm going to wrap it. I actually crease it. Fold it back around to the back side. Try to keep it straight. I use uh, my tweezers to bring it back to fold it and then just put some glue on. Beautiful and very simple, but if you do not know how, have never done one not always easy at first. I would suggest, and I messed this one up a little bit, not that you'll notice it, but when you're putting this flap on, put it down a little bit. Don't put it all the way to the top of the bow or, you know, one end of the bow. It'll just give you a little bit more to work on. That's what I'm struggling with now. So just put it a little bit too high on one end. But I just want to let this sit a moment to dry. You can make these really big. You can make multiple loops. You might want to cut one just, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch shorter. You can make as many loops as you want. What I do though, if I add more loops, this little tiny wrap piece in the center, I make it longer, not wider, but I do make it longer just because you got more layers of paper to go through. So now I'm going to come back with this and I'm going to start assembling how I'm going to do my flowers okay I have these two leaves I've pretty much did this in my head I'm not putting a sentiment on this one yet I might put a small sentiment on the uh, flap or when I put it in a bag I'll probably make a little tag just you know something and put a sentiment on but I've got these two uh, leaves. They were from a die that I have. Let me show you the die set here. It's uh, I think I got it off of AliExpress. It makes flowers, and there's two different size leaves. Which I just wanted an open leaf for something different. Now bear with me because I kind of had this planned in my head. I just start pulling from my stash. I don't really, you know, ever really. Know what I'm going to put where. 
that's the problem when I do these. It's kind of hard to share with you. I have this rose from Really Reasonable Ribbon. I do not make paper roses or flowers anymore. I, I just buy them. It's so much easier for me. And then I think these are apple blossoms. I'm just going to put those. This is my plan so far here. Just put them here. And then I have these little berry picks. Um, I'm going to take this green piece off. And I'm going to cut this stem part way off because I'm not sure if I'm going to take it apart or what I'm going to do. My poor scissors. One of these days it's just going to quit on me. I had, they're just little frosted and plastic coated stamens and then they got, you know, the little beads and stuff. I'm thinking it's just going to go probably right there. Okay. And again, because this person that's receiving this is not a frilly sort of person, this bow is going to be enough. I would otherwise put more fiber bows, you know, I tie bows and everything, and, but yeah, that will be a little bit more than would be appropriate here, so that's how it's going to go. Well, I'm just going to glue everything down. I'm going to start with my leaves. Uh, I'm going to give my leaves, again, a little bit of dimension, so I'm just kind of curling them up, and the tip I'm just going to curl a little bit back. I do this when I use when I make tags for Christmas or other tags when I'm putting any kind of greenery on. It just makes them more lifelike. And then I also only put glue on maybe the bottom sections. I don't do the whole leaf. So I'll kind of put this on here. Stuck. Mm, couldn't get my tweezers apart for some reason. I don't know where I learned to do the curling of the leaves and greenery and stuff. I think I just figured, well, you curl other paper that way. Why not try to give it some life? And the first couple Christmas tags, I didn't do that. And then I started doing it, and I liked the look a lot better. So, okay, I'm going to put flowers on mentioned I have glue dots for a change. I uh, said I get tired of fighting with the glue so so we can fight with these things instead. They're not my favorite thing either so I'm gonna try three. Or not. See I don't like them very well. I just don't have the best of luck. I already have to do some minor gluing here. Part of it is uh, I've got that, I cut the stem off and it's still got just a tiny bit of uh, wire sticking up. Otherwise the flower might come apart, which I had to before. I have a glue dot stuck to my finger. I don't know. Am I the only one that has problems with these crazy things? Let's try this pick. I just... <laughs> I'm going to put four on because I don't know. I, I probably will apply some glue to it. Crazy. Honestly, if it, I like the repositionable ones. They're okay. I think probably maybe they're not quite as sticky. We're just going to add some glue here, just because I don't, don't know. I'm going to hold this on. I'm putting this in the middle, obviously. You couldn't see. Excuse me. That might work. I might have to consider that. I was using glossy accents. I've seen that years ago on a video, that that worked really well. Uh, see, here's my little green stem that's sticking up. I'm going to try to bend it over a little bit. Anyway, I'd seen glossy accents work. Well, that's great, but glossy accents doesn't dry quite as fast as I like. And I know a lot of people have, you know, suggested, hey, 
Who's glue dots? Well, now you see why I don't like glue dots. They don't like me. Period. I just think that I'm challenged when it comes to the dumb things. Yet they're very sticky and they, I mean, they work really well once you get them on. It's not that, it's just glue dot challenged. My computer wants to fall asleep like I do tonight. These little apple blossoms I'm going to put on either side here. And I don't put them flat, I kind of put them at a little bit of an angle. So I'll have to kind of hold them in there a little bit. Let's see if we can get the other one on a little bit. With a little bit less challenge. How about that? Okay, I gotta get my green stem thing down there a little bit. And I try to put a glue dot right on there because that sometimes can be a problem area for gluing. If you make paper flowers, this would be wonderful to put them on. I had a glue dot. I really oh here, so I really did, and then all of a sudden it was gone. But that's another thing you could use to decorate. You could uh, you could put beads. You know everything. Like I said, I have a little bit of a struggle doing too much because I know it probably will not get saved, which is fine. I'm not. You know that's everybody else everybody's personal thing, but I am, um, here we go again, I, I see some beautiful projects, this is just how I do it, so, okay, got this, let's try to put this one, when I'm working with, in front of the camera, sometimes it's more of a challenge, I'm sorry, kind of crazy here. I'm just going to kind of stick that where I can. Wherever it's going to stay for me. Okay, I was making sure my back piece was staying on. Gonna See, it's coming together. See that? And then I'll put my bow on and I'll put those other flowers. I'm using glue for my bow. Here again, I only put it on part of it. Kind of want it stuck under there a little bit, so hold it on a minute. This dries relatively quick, so it's kind of nice. Okay, I think I'll figure out how to get glue dots on the stem of that thing and see if we can't get that put together and wrapped up. And there you have my crazy way of how I put my little boxes and stuff together. I just, I start going through what I have for flowers and kind of laying things on, thinking, okay, does that look good? Would this go together? Um, if I have, I've even worked around sentiments that I have, stamps, uh, and then, depending upon, you know, what they say, started finding things that I could, you know, either pieces that I, SVG files I have that I could work with together, or, I don't know, I, I just, okay, putting that in, and it will get hid under the flower, as you can see here, I'm just gonna, I work better with my tweezers, and get it pushed in there a little bit, I believe, this particular set of little berry clusters, I got a bunch, I got from AliExpress. I will tell you, nothing against AliExpress, I mean, great. The products I've gotten there, and then what I've gotten from Really Reasonable Ribbon, the Really Reasonable Ribbon is a lot nicer. I, um, I could tell a difference, even because I'd gotten some red ones, I know from really reasonable ribbon. There is a difference. I don't know. Not a lot, but, and I'm not, 
I don't get paid by really reasonable ribbon or anything. I just really do like the service and the products they have. So just sharing with you my experience. One more thing you could do, like I said, you either put a sentiment here. Um, I'm going to look at my rhinestones here a moment. I can't leave anything alone. You know, I got to keep adding and adding, but then it would look like a clasp on there. So I'm thinking it needs something. And if I can get to them easy enough. Yeah, I'll put a white one on. And I, even though these are adhesive backed, thank you, Kim, I use these. I go, this is my go-to stash here that I got from Kim Ferguson. I'm going to put it on top of the magnet. I still have always used a drop of glue. Uh, I think when, you know, just even from stuff we've worked on with, with Cards for Soldiers, you know, they've said too, if you're sending cards with rhinestones or whatnot, little embellishments, it is best to glue them. They don't always stick just with the adhesive you use, and hot and cold temperatures will affect it too. So, okay, to me, that was all that needed was that little spot in the middle, that little 